practice is a wall yin class. If you have lots of lower back issues, um, I would recommend refraining from doing this class until you feel a bit better um, as the majority of the class is done lying on your back. So just be mindful there. However, this class is for all levels, um, super chill, super easy going um, and great uh, for postnatal as well, not prenatal. So this is not a prenatal class, but definitely postnatal, this is accessible. So we'll start just coming to the middle of the mat. Now you will need some wall space. So you've got to find some wall space somewhere. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot, but a little bit of wall space. Um, and you'll want to put your mat, if you have one, right up against the wall. Before we get to the wall work, we're just going to start with some alternate nostril breathing. So find a comfortable seated position for you. You'll be using your right hand. Left hand can just rest on the knee or the thigh. Your index and middle finger can rest between the eyebrows on the third eye, um, or you can tuck them into the palm of the hand. Using your thumb on your right nostril and your ring finger and pinky finger on your left nostril. So just finding a few deep breaths here in a seated position. Relax the shoulders and the face. Bring your right hand up. Index and middle, the middle finger either tuck into the palm of the hand or just rest them between the eyebrows on the third eye. Inhale through both nostrils and exhale through both nostrils. Use your thumb, plug the right nostril and inhale through the left for one, two, three, four. Close the left, open the right, exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale through the right for one, two, three, four. Close the right, open the left, exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale left for one, two, three, four. Close the left, open the right, exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale right for one, two, three, four. Close the right, open the left, exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale left for one, two, three, four. Close the left, open the right, exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale right for one, two, three, four, close the right, open the left, exhale for one, two, three, four, last round, inhale left, one, two, three, four, close the left, open the right, exhale for one, two, three, four, inhale right for one, two, three, four, close the right, open the left, exhale for one, two, three, four. Just take the right hand down, inhale and exhale through the nose a few times. A couple more inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale and exhale. Great, so we'll make our way over to the wall. The best and easiest way to get close to the wall for the postures is to actually sit sideways up against the wall. So you'll want to take yourself sideways to the wall and you're going to swing your legs up and lie down on your back. So you'll swing your legs up and you lie down on your back here. Legs go to the sky and you may need to scoot your butt forward a little bit. That's okay. And then arms just come down by your sides here and find that place that works for you. You may want to have some props but I'm going to show you without because um, they're not necessary. So first posture we're going to start for wall yin is a butterfly posture. It's bringing the soles of the feet together. Start to slide the legs of the feet down the wall. Let the knees open up. Keep the lower back rooted into the floor and just see where you go. Now you can use your hands to help engage and go deeper. That's totally fine. Try to relax the rib cage. You could put your hands on your belly or on the floor. You could bring them over your head. It's really up to you and what feels good. Sometimes on the thighs. And then we'll just take a few deep breaths here and we'll be here for about three minutes. So if you'd like to extend this class beyond that and take it to five minutes, you can once you get familiar with the series. But three minutes. 
habits works, especially if maybe you're new to the class. Always know that in your yin class, we tend to take a posture to its greatest depth for us at the beginning, because we want to get the most out of our class. But then as we hold the posture, it becomes too much for us. So it's okay if you take a position that maybe you can't sustain. Try not to come out of it completely. So if this is too much, instead of coming out, I would just slide my feet up the wall and just ease a little bit of that tension for the remainder of the time. So you always want to try to hold the posture for the full length of time, the best that you can, and the depth that you can sustain. Also with that, sometimes you come into a posture too quickly. So if you come in too quickly, the muscles will try to protect us ourselves from overstretching. And if that happens, then as you start to be in a pose and you relax, sometimes the muscles will relax and then suddenly you'll have the opportunity to go deeper. And if that happens, you can take it at any time. able to be aware of the body. So awareness is always key to maintain safety in the pose. And then from here, we're just going to allow ourselves to take our legs straight up the wall and extend them straight. So from here, the next three minutes, it's just the legs straight up the wall but against the wall if you can. Toes relaxed, arms in any placement that you'd like, maybe on the floor this time or above you, maybe just resting on the belly. Sometimes it's nice to connect hands to belly so you can feel that breath as you inhale, the belly will rise. And as you exhale, the belly will fall. Try your best to stay present and aware. Know that our stresses and our anxieties all lie because we, we the majority of the time, live in our past and in our future. And if we can learn to become more present and in the moment, everything is manageable. A lot of times we tend to dwell on the past or we start to question or process the future, what it will hold. And it becomes overwhelming. But if we become present in the moment, in the moment is what we manage. We're all here, we're all managing, so just breathe, stay in this moment. You've dedicated some time for yourself into this practice, and so not to escape.
it's going to be quite different here. You may want to use your hands. And so bringing the feet down on the wall as much or as little as you'd like and as wide or as narrow as you'd like. It's up to you. So you'll take some time here to explore where you want to be. And then once you find it, just hold. For me, I like having my hands rest differently for each pose, but it doesn't have to be that way. The arms, the hands, it's really up to you. You may feel like the knees want to splay out. That's okay. So you're not trying to really sustain anything too much as long as you've got the majority of the form going on the low back is down. You're supported, that's what matters. When I always find that in yin class, we hold something for three minutes. In our day-to-day -day life, three minutes goes by so fast. But as soon as you have to hold something, three minutes can feel like a lifetime. So just breathe. Try to witness what's happening in the body without judgment. And that's a big one. Keep a breath through the nose. And anytime the mind starts to wander, just come back to the breath. This is a medita meditation technique where you actually can count your breath. So inhale, maybe you count to four. And exhale, count to four. Meditation is about being mindful and present. You can use that in your yin practice to train the mind. From the squat position, we're going to take a straddle. So I like to take my legs up the wall first. Maybe just let my back loosen up a little bit. Find that position again, and then take the legs straight down and let them hang. So here would be where you may want something propped under your thighs. It's up to you. Um, if you have blocks, yeah, absolutely, put them there. If you don't have blocks, it's okay. You can do it without. You just may need to ease into it a little bit. Um, you don't want to just completely hang. Uh, that intense stretch will only get more intense in the time it will hold. So be patient with yourself. Don't overdo it. No one's judging. Just breathe and stay. And feel. And then let the opening happen. In yin class, too much can be not good. So take it easy. Try not to go to 100%. One of my favorite yin teachers said, do 30%. Because 30% will turn into 60 real fast, and then 60 will turn into 90. So 30 is okay. It's totally okay.
Yoga is a lot about awareness in the body too. So if your eyes are closed and you like to keep them closed, absolutely. Um, what I like to do sometimes is just in this position, open my eyes. Just take a peek at my legs. You know, witnessing if one leg is higher than the other or if one foot is turned out more than the other just gives me more information about you know how flexible my hips are and how equal they are and um, what's going on in my groin um, my psoas my glutes even so when you have knowledge about your body um, you can actually be a lot more powerful in your practice because you're able to work on the things to balance yourself out To come out of this, I, I don't always like just sliding my legs up the wall, so I'll just use my hands to help me bend the heels, drag in, and then bring the legs into the body. Sometimes a nice little squeeze of rock feels real nice at this point. Up to you how you transition through. So we'll do a version of a thread the needle. So from here, you'll want to get your feet and heels at the same level as your knees, and then you'll want to bring your hips back. So you're going to scooch back away from the wall, and you'll want to try to create a nice angle here. So the left foot is going to stay on the wall, the low back is going to stay rooted. We'll take the right leg up and over, and just connect the ankle to uh, the thigh just above the knee here. And so it's really important that the knee and the heel are in one straight line. Obviously, if you're by yourself, you're just eyeballing it. Um, maybe you look through your legs to see it. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, exact. So if you're a little bit too high or a little bit too low, that's okay. But the general area is important. Uh, and then just hanging out here. Now, if you rest your ankle down and relax it, that is okay in your yin practice. Um, if you do have ankle injury, you want to flex the foot to keep this in a straight line. Um, and that can be really important. So it's just dependent um, where you go. You want to make sure that the low back is on the floor. And we'll just hold here, breathe through the nose. So everyone feels the yin postures a little bit differently in their body. You know, for me coming into this posture, I suddenly want to puff out my rib cage and really open up this top part of the body. I get tight in my middle spine, and so I consciously have to steadily remind myself to relax, relax my ribs, relax my belly. You know, none of that is serving me being tight and expanded and um, trying to express my chest open doesn't serve me so I'm just trying to keep that relaxed and that's my focus. seems to be the motto of most people's days right about now. From 
here, this leg shape is really important. We're actually going to keep this shape to move into our twist. So we'll be twisting over to the left. So as you take yourself to the left, that right foot can come to the floor. You'll want to point your left foot, which was the foot that was on the wall, and just drag that down until the top of the foot hits. If you have a baseboard, the baseboard, and then the side edge of your left foot is actually on the floor. So if you look down, you should be able to see the sole of your left foot. Um, and then you'll twist over, and for most of us, the left knee will even hit the baseboard as well. And so you can expand that right hand to the side. You can take your left hand to your left um, outside thigh or your right outside thigh, excuse me, and just stay here. Um, you may not have that range, and so maybe the right foot is flat on the floor. That's okay too. Everybody's a little bit different here. So just find a place that will work for you. a great element to any class near the end, neutralizing the spine and the energy that's through the body. Find a lot of classes where I'll have a twist near the end. Trying to keep the right shoulder to the ground so it's really tight when you're trying to bring this right leg over this right shoulder and make the anchor. So it might be more beneficial to keep the right shoulder down but actually take the right knee up. You just have to find more balance um, in what will serve you today. I know that if you do this class tomorrow, it may look completely different and that's totally okay. That's the amazing thing about a yoga practice is even though you do the same class, Also to keep in mind is if you're not twisting the head to the right, you're eliminating the cervical spine um, from the twist. So if you have neck injury, you can, of course. But if there's no real reason, you just always keep your head straight. Start to look the opposite way of the legs. This will have the twist happen through the entire spine, which is a really important element to the twist. Again, if you have injury or ailment and you're modifying, you'll modify. Good, and so then we'll take our thread the needle on the other side. So just lift up. And this time I'll bring your right foot to the wall. So lift the foot down and your left ankle across. Now, you're gonna be different from one side to the other. So you may get here and be like, ah, that's perfect, amazing. But for a lot of us, you might need to scooch a little bit in, or maybe you need to scooch a little bit out, right? And that's okay. So you want to honor the side that you're working on and not try to make it equal and even. The equal and evenness will happen when we do the postures where both legs are doing the same thing at the same time. Right now it's time to work on each individual side. So find the side that works for you. Again, make sure that the sole of the foot is rooted against the wall, the heel and the knee are in one straight line the best that you can, parallel to the floor. Uh, again, left ankle injury, you wanna flex that foot, keep the alignment in the shin, the ankle, the knee. Otherwise, it feels good for you to relax it, you can relax it, there's no problem there, that's up to you when you're in practice. Um, low back on the floor, so you can't get my hand under here, that's what we want. You don't wanna be doing one of those, that's not good. So keep the low back. If you're doing one of those, that means you gotta scooch away from the wall. It means you're too tight um, to be as close as you are, so you just need to scooch back. And then just breathe. You need to close the eyes, focus on the breath, you need to have a belly. When you get this point, you feel like you just wanna take your arms overhead, have different rotation of the shoulders.
the process of what it could be or what it means. Just sense the body, feel the body without judgment. As a yoga teacher, I often hear people call parts of their body bad. I have a bad knee, I have a bad hip. The way we talk to ourselves is so, so important. Try not to label anything as bad. When you shift it, my knee is healing. My knee is building strength. It can sound silly, but the words that we use uh, to describe our body means so much to our bodies. So shifting that narrative within ourselves is so important. More breaths here. So we'll take that spine twist on the other side. Gonna can be a little tricky to get into, so just take a little bit of a shift over to the right and point your right foot so that the top of the foot comes to the wall. So as that drags down, the top of the foot should be against the wall, the base bar, bar forward, hopefully, and then the outside of your right foot is resting on the floor. So if that left foot comes down and is here, that's okay. If you want to tuck it under um, and maybe even put the sole of the foot against the board in a variation of somewhat of an eagle, um, you can do that. Left arm goes across, look to the left, right hand can rest on thigh, can bend out. It's up to you where it goes. I like just something to hold to. And breathing here. Try not to compare this side to the other. Just feel this side for what it is. have this masculine and feminine side and this yin and this yang and so we try to balance it out through yoga. Good, then head through center, bring your legs back up through center. So the next variation of um, pose we're gonna do, you can vary it either it's wall bridge, or you can try to even do a shoulder snatch. So I'll show you both. You may want to scooch a little bit closer depending on your strength and your flexibilities. The first one is just putting the soles of the feet to the floor. We won't be here for three minutes, I promise you that. 
and then you can just take your hips up. So you may want to just try that and see how that feels and hold that there. And then if it becomes too much, you can just drop back down and then go back up. Alternatively, you can actually come super close to the wall. You can actually take your butt up the wall as well. You want to probably make sure that this is possible for you before you just get into it. So just bring yourself up the wall, legs up, resting. Ah. Let a lot of blood flow come into the body. Breathe. It's a lot of pressure to take on the shoulders. You don't want it on your neck. So just be mindful there. This can be a lot for a lot of people. It's not a recommendation. It's just to show that there is this possibility, which is a little more advanced for those of you that need it. The majority of us don't need that. So just see how it feels. Breathe through the nose. I'm actually going to take myself back to a bridge elevation, just because that's good enough for me. onto our bellies now so you'll come on forward onto the mat a little bit and then you'll just take your knee bend it and bring it all the way up to the crease of the wall and do the same with the other and so from here we'll take sphinx posture you can open the knees up if you'd like you can keep them close and then there's options here so you could take sphinx with elbows to the floor and then just chest lifted and head in neutral position or hanging you can drop all the way down just kind of hang out and feel rested or you could even come into seal if you wanted even more compression it's up to you where you go for me today sphinx feels nice but everybody's different know that if you're um, in any position then you want to try to relax the glutes and that's um, just letting the low back relax the glutes relax and then just breathe here this is our final posture before we hit our shavasana our child's pose so Take it for what it is, breathe. here so inhale and exhale inhale and exhale last one inhale and exhale so we'll just come into our final resting posture I would recommend child's pose um, if you prefer a front line shavasana or back line shavasana or on your side, please feel free to do that. But I like to actually do closed knee child's pose just because 
after all that back on the work, it feels nice. So rest, bring your knees together, feet together, hips to heels. Just bring your belly to your thighs. Try to get the center of your forehead to the floor. The arms can just go behind you. And for me, this is where I like to finish this practice. But for you, if you prefer it differently, that's okay too. Just find a spot that you can breathe deeply and completely relax. Know that you can stay in this final posture as long as you need. I would like to thank you for allowing me to guide you through your Walian practice. And I hope to see you again very soon. Namaste.